Hi guys, and welcome back for another SIBO mistake. This time, let's talk about probiotics. Oh my gosh. I know. Now, before you run away from the video, just hear me out. I do my best to be as unbiased and as evidence-based as humanly possible. So here's the way I see the probiotic question within the world of SIBO. We have, um, in one quarter, if you will, we have the current body of evidence in the medical literature. So if you were to go on PubMed and type in, you know, probiotics and SIBO, what kind of hits would you get? And what is, what is the research saying on this side? And on the other side, we have basically the internet as a whole. We've got bloggers and bloggers, forums, and, you know, everywhere in between where you have individual people's opinions versus what the medical research is telling us. And they are very much in conflict with each other. Neither of them is perfect. So that's why I want this video to bridge the gap between the two and say, okay, what can we take from both of these sides and make sense of the same thing? Because we're really trying to answer the same exact question. Should people with SIBO take probiotics? Is there going to be a benefit? Is there going to be a harm? So let's go over all of this. One of the things that I'll provide in the link below is a link to a 2018 meta-analysis study. So this is a big type of study where they look at other research studies and they compile all of the data, they review all of the existing body of evidence, and they say, here's what we think. So this 2018 meta-analysis was largely in favor of the use of probiotics in SIBO. They cited a couple of studies where they talked about decrease in bacterial counts or eradication with probiotics alone, and it, it was actually very promising, I think. In the internet, the blogger sphere, there is a common, um, a common thread or a common theme when the conversation of probiotics gets brought up, which is that SIBO people, people who have SIBO, rather, should not take probiotics because the the thing that people tend to say is that if you have bacteria that's too high up or built up in the upper part of the intestines and you add bacteria on top of that then you're adding fire to fire and it's going to make the overgrowth in the small intestine worse i don't know why i'm up here it's down here here's the thing though everything you eat everything you put in your body from water to food is not sterile you're adding bacteria to that pool of bacteria every single day and that's where something like low stomach acid comes in and prokinetics. You want to make sure that the bacteria you do take in is moving through your system. So I don't know if I personally ever wrap my head around the idea that you're adding bacteria on top of bacteria and it's just going to stay and it's never going to move. But that is one of the theories. What I would say and what I've noticed is that probiotics can definitely, definitely help people with SIBO. They're not always my first go-to. Usually I'm doing like prokinetics or maybe herbal antimicrobials first, but they are something that I do use with SIBO patients quite often and IBS patients. What I've also observed is that, is that sometimes people with SIBO will react negatively to a probiotic. And you could approach that as, oh no, like that can't possibly be. Or you can listen to that individual and say, well, but why? Was it because of this thing that we've heard that you're adding bacteria on top of bacteria and that's why you're exacerbating the overgrowth in the SIBO? Or is it for other reasons? So for example, probiotics, we're just starting to understand, manipulate the immune system. They can manipulate the balance of Th1 and Th2 cells, Th17 and Tregs. Probiotics are information for your immune system to go do stuff and then the immune system can affect your gut and it can affect your inflammation. So that is actually my theory is that a lot of people, when they react poorly to a probiotic, it's more of an immune inflammatory mechanism rather than a buildup of excessive bacteria and you're making that buildup worse. Nonetheless, I think it is totally relevant to listen to the patient when they tell us as clinicians, hey, I responded poorly to this probiotic. What should we do? Should I continue? Should I discontinue? So that's partially why, uh, quite a while ago now, I developed a system where I just, honestly, I said, screw it. I, I'm tired of sending people home with a probiotic, having them hate it after like two doses, and then they're out, you know, 30, 40, 50, sometimes 60 bucks for this bottle of probiotics that they're never going to use again. 
So what I personally do in my clinic, and this goes for my distance patients too, I have little baggies with two capsules of each probiotic that I like, that I carry, and I tell people, have at it. Here's two capsules of each. I have about 15 probiotics in stock. It keeps you occupied for about 30 days. Here's a stool diary and a symptom diary. Tell me what changes, tell me what makes you better and worse. And usually what will happen, even amongst my SIBO patients, is that the vast majority of probiotics seem to do nothing. They come back and they're like, you know, out of the 15, 10 did absolutely nothing for me. Usually there's at least one or two that do something positive, like their bloating is decreased, they feel like they're digesting better, and this is within the span of two days, keep in mind. And then usually there's another one, two, or maybe three that make them feel noticeably worse. And those are the ones that we say, we for sure are not gonna put you on those. But I look at the winners from that cohort and I say, well, I don't know if I need to fully understand why your body seemed to like that probiotic, but I want to explore that. I want to send you home with a whole bottle of the stuff now, and let's see what a full actual trial of this probiotic can do for you if we already have an inkling that it's a good one for you from a two-day trial, right? So I would say, to kind of not rabbit trail off my video too much, yes, you could use probiotics if you have SIBO. No, you don't have to stick with just the spore-forming bacteria. There's not as much evidence of spore-forming probiotics as the makers want you to think there is. They're starting to do studies, but it's still severely lacking compared to other types of probiotics. And I don't use them super frequently in all honesty. But you can actually do Bifidobacterium, Lactobacillus, all different types of probiotics, but it's just individual. So if you react poorly to one type of probiotic, don't, don't just say, you know, never again, I'm never taking a probiotic again. I think that's probably throwing the baby out with the bathwater. It's probably more likely that you just didn't find the right probiotic for you, and it's gonna take a little bit more trial and error to figure that out. Now, unfortunately, if you don't have a clinician like me who's willing to break open bottles and send you home with two capsules of each, it ends up being a costly process to just try a whole bunch of things. Because like I said, out of a cohort of about 15 probiotics, usually there's only one, two, or three that really make a notable difference. All the rest seem to do diddly squat or make you feel worse. Um, so it is kind of a pain in the butt, pun intended, to do this on your own, but it, it does generally work. If you try enough probiotics, even if you have SIBO, usually you will find at least one, if not two, that seem to make a notable positive difference for you. I hope this was helpful. I'll provide the link to that 2018 meta-analysis down below, as well as an article that I wrote about this topic. Mm, I don't remember how old the blog post is now, but it's within the last year for sure. Um, so I'll, I will include that. And if you're curious, if you're thinking, wait, Dr. Deneza, what about the D-lactic acidosis and lactobacilli and the brain fog study? Don't worry, that is in here too. So I will link that down below. I already did a video all about that D-lactic acidosis brain fog SIBO study and a video all about what D-lactic acidosis actually is. So I will include that down in the doobly-doo below. So I'm going to be back, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video.